I'm going to just do an example now. This isn't for notes. This isn't really for an exam. This is just a demonstration of how we could take data and visualize the internal structure of a mineral. Today's mineral that we're going to just be using as our demo is called andalusite. Andalusite is a really important metamorphic mineral. I'll throw in a couple uh, images, I think, from Wikipedia showing andalusite. There's one. Here's another. It's, a fair, it's got some fairly characteristic properties. One, you could probably even guess what is its crystal system and structures by looking at this picture right here. I see a square going down into a rectangular shape. If I were to draw the axes through here, well, it looks like they're going to intersect with one another at 90 degrees. And A does not equal B does not equal C. So this is an orthorhombic crystal. The chemical formula is Al2SiO5. And let's just put these notes down here. We can see that this is an orthorhombic crystal. Orthorhombic system. If it's an orthorhombic system, what crystal class is it? Well, it's got to be the 2 over m, 2 over m, 2 over m. But all of that is the external symmetry. We need to actually get into the lattice. Now, there's different information that we could pull from the literature, from different sources that tell us about where atoms occur in andalusite, where the aluminum, the silica, and the oxygens occur. So if we were to draw the simple lattice of andalusite, we are going to have to do it with all the angles are 90, A, B, and C, but it is orthorhombic, and the axes are different lengths. And it ends up being that the C axis is the shortest. It's about 5.5 angstroms. The A is longer than that. It's about 7.7. And the B is actually the longest. It's about 7.9. All right, so let's draw it in this shape fully now. This is just kind of a representation of what we know the lattice to be. One of the Brave lattices, if it's orthorhombic, it could be face-centered or body-centered. And we don't have that information yet. But what we do have is that the CX is about 5.56 angstroms. And the B axis is about 7.9 angstroms long. And the A axis is 7.8 about angstroms long. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this grid. And if you don't have a grid in front of you, but you're working along, just take a second and draw a square, break it down into pieces where there's like, a, you'd say like an x-axis and a y-axis. Here's 0 0.25, here's 0 0.5, 0 0.75, and 1. We can do the same thing here. Here's 0 0.25, 0 0.5, 0 0.75. And one. So we've got this grid work. And I said x and y axis. That was kind of silly. We're using minerals here. So this is the a axis. Here's the b axis. And now the c axis is coming out towards our face. So we're looking down from a bird's eye view. So c axis is vertical. Now, I have gone into a textbook that teaches mineralogy. And I have pulled out the structural information for andalusite. It doesn't tell us where all of the aluminum, silica, and oxygens are, but it does tell us where a lot of them are in terms of its, uh, oh, it'd be better, it also has X and Y. I don't like that. In terms of A, B, and C. And we're looking down the C axis, so these numbers don't necessarily mean anything. But if we were to take this information and place it on our grid, we would say that there should be a silica atom at 0.24A. So we go 0.24A right along this line, and 0.25b so along this line. So right here, we could put in a silica. And we can now we need to go through and do that for the rest of these. I'm going to do this color-coded. We're going to have, uh, let's see, do we like purple? Do we like green? We'll go green. Uh, aluminums will be green. So there's one aluminum at, and they, they this table calls it, Aluminum 1, it's at 0, 0. Aluminum 2 is at 3, 7. So down here, 3, 7. And 1, 3, 9. So kind of here in the middle. That's Al2. Right? Now let's put in our 
oxygens. Where do our oxygens go? We'll do oxygens in red. I'll make them just little circle dots. We've got an OA at 4233. OB is at about the exact same place, but one's higher up than the other on the C-axis. Where does that go? 0 0.4 on the A, 0 0.3 on the B. So here there is an oxygen. And it's the A and the B oxygens are sitting there. The C oxygen is at 0 0.1 and 0 0.4. So it's going to be about here. That's our oxygen C. And where's our oxygen D? It's at 0 0.23 and 1.3. So close to this line, we're going to have oxygen D. We've placed some of the atoms. And you can see we're going to try to place them based on the symmetry elements in this crystal throughout the rest of the grid. To do that though, we need to know where the different symmetry elements are. So I'm gonna put in um, the positions of our twofold axis. There's a twofold axis here. There's a twofold axis, twofold, 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 twofold and twofold rotation, okay? So we're gonna put in our symmetry element here. This is our symbol for our A2. Now, A2 is not aluminum, right? A2 is just our twofold axis of rotation. And there's also glide planes that are present in this crystal. And there are glides that occur right here. There is a glide. I'll label that as a G, it's a line. And here's a glide. Here's a glide. And there's also glides that cut across in this direction. We have a glide right here. And we have another glide down here. Now with that symmetry information alone, we can generate the rest of the structure of our andalusite. So the first thing we do is we place the data that we've been given. Then we should go to our simplest, easiest, uh, symmetry element and do a, and do the rotation. So let's use the central twofold to generate the structure. So if we have the silica here and we do a twofold rotation 180 degrees, then there's going to be a silica right there, right? And where would our aluminums be? Will there be aluminum rotate around AL1? And this aluminum we rotate around, and there's going to be a nice little AL. Two. Let me see, where would we put this AL2? We'd put it about here. Okay, now for our oxygens. You can see it, as long as you work methodically and slowly, it ends up being not a very hard exercise to do. But if you try to rush, you can get lost pretty quick. So we're going to take this OC, we're going to rotate it around 180 degrees, and it is here. A, B, rotate 100 around, A, B, O, D, rotate around, O, D. Now the next thing we should do is start using our glide planes. So let's do a little glide work with the silicons. Now this silicon is not sitting exactly at the 0 0.25. It's a little off from it. So if we were to move it along the glide, which can go in this direction or in this direction, right? Because the glide plane is across the whole thing. Well, we would need to go down. Oh yeah, and how far is the glide? Glides tend to be T half. So we're gonna move by 0 0.5 blocks. So the next silicon is here and the next silicon is here. Let's make sure it works with this glide. Well, sure it does, because here it is. We go down and translate and there it is. Let's do it with the aluminums. So here's an AL2. AL2, we need to move it. We need to translate it in this direction, right, by 0 0.5. And then, oh, but that's not the glide plane right there. Knucklehead. Where is the glide plane? There's the glide plane right there. So it's actually, we're going to go this way, and then we're going to flip it up. So actually, the AL2 is here. I caught myself before I made a critical mistake. Now, how about this one? We're going to glide it back translate across, and there's going to be an AL2 here. There's AL2, AL2, AL2. Now our AL1s, where do those go? Well, oh, I didn't. Let's see, let's see, we got the glide. So we're going to go down, 
translate across, well, there's an AL1 here. And then if there's a glide here, we can glide back up and translate across. There's an AL1 here. And there's AL1 there. Oh boy, there's AL1s at all the corners, aren't there? Mm -hmm. Double checking. I'm just watching. I'm taking the glide. And I'm going, okay, I'm going across and down a half. I'm going uh, down and across, right, using this glide plane here. I think we have just put in all the correct aluminum once. So now the only thing left to do is put in the rest of the oxygens. So we have OAB, OAB. There is a glide right through here, so we're going to need to go glide up, mirror across, OAB. And here's another glide, so we're going to take this one, and we're going to glide down. Let's see, one, two, and across. Why am I choosing to go in down in this direction, and I chose to go up in this direction? Well, that's because if I had chosen to go down in this direction, what would I have gone? I got one, two, and I'd have been off the screen down here. So it would project into the next lattice, and we're not working on that lattice right now. So the OC... We're going to glide, well sure we could glide up, but if we glide up then we're off the scope so we can't see it. So we're going to glide down one, down two, across O, C. Let's go, let's use this glide. We're going to glide, glide over one, two, flip it down. Well, it's actually already here, so I was just a little messy, it's the same one. C, C, one, two, over. There's an OC. If we have one here, then we should flip it around. There it is there. Okay, I think all of those are correct. I think it's now just the ODs that we have left to do. And here is one. We go one, two, flip it, OD. Let's do this one. One, two, flip it. O, D. And let's make sure this works. Let's make sure this one works with this one over the glide. One, two, flip it. There it is. Well, if you tracked with me, you have just found the internal symmetry of andalusite using symmetry elements and what this would look like if we had done it in full three dimensions. And no one does that without computers. This is what you would have found as the final shape. Now I'm going to scroll up, and I'm going to scroll down. I'm going to scroll up, I'm going to scroll down. Just to emphasize, like, look at this symmetry. We've got something here in the middle, some space around it. We've got some black balls here. What are those in our drawing? Well, we've got our aluminum sitting right there in the middle. It's surrounded by actually a decent amount of space. The black balls that are sitting off to the side, kind of like a square around it, those are our silicons. So it looks like we did this right. Good job.